Hello, and welcome to the Thyroid Warrior Podcast. I'm Ebony, and I'm here as your wellness facilitator. I'm going to be sharing my experiences in managing Hashimoto's disease, and I really hope that it'll help you on your personal journey. Keep in mind, however, this does not substitute as medical advice. It is only for your information and motivational purposes only. Now, let's get started. Hello friends, we are back in this series and we are going to talk about some less known uplifting essential oils. And what I really want to do in this series is to educate you and to help you understand a little bit more about essential oils and especially as it relates to those that are not as popular. And when I say not as popular, I'm talking about your lavenders, lemons, peppermints, tea tree oil, etc. So I want to give you more inside information in terms of how you can utilize essential oils to help with your overall well-being. Now I am going to mention this at every episode. When you are working with essential oils, it's very important for you to A, understand their potency and volatility or they're very combustible, so to speak. And I don't mean that from a chemical reaction, but I do mean that they can have a lot of bad side effects if you are not using them with care and caution. So if you're going to use essential oils, I want you to be sure to have a conversation with your provider about them because they can impact or interfere with your medication or any other treatment protocol that you are currently under. So I want to make sure that we're keeping you safe because that is what's most important. So with essential oils, what I also want to remind you about or tell you about is As we spoke about in the last episode about essential oil safety, we also have to think about how we actually get the material for essential oils. And as it relates to that, what we have been able to do is harvest the plant matter, but it takes a lot of plant matter in order to extract the essential oil, the floral water, or even a hydrosol. So I really want you to be conscious of that. And that is why it is also important for you to pay attention to things like the price when you are purchasing essential oils. There are some things like our citrus oils, for example, that are easy to come by. And that is why you're going to see them at a lower cost. However, an essential oil like jasmine or neroli, like I mentioned before, those are going to give you the absolutes and they are going to be a lot more difficult to harvest because a lot of times we're getting the essential oils from the petals. So we also have to be very delicate when we are extracting those essential oils. So that is why you're going to notice that those have a higher cost associated with them. So those are just two little side pieces of information for you. So what I also want to just touch on very briefly are the chemical components of essential oils. And it's critical that we understand the different aspects of them because that's what's going to help you to understand when you have essential oils that are photosensitizers or our our citrus oils. So that is going to be important for you to know because sometimes when they're exposed to the, not sometimes, when they're exposed to sun, they break down. They, meaning the chemical compounds, known as monoterpenes, they break down in the container when they're exposed to the light or sun, so they're not going to be as effective. The other thing to keep in mind as well is when you're using citrus oils on your skin, they are also considered what's called phototoxic, so they may also not all, again, check in with your doctor for your particular use case, they can also cause skin irritation and can burn your skin when exposed to the sun. So you also want to keep that in mind. But minus all of that very scary stuff, they do provide a lot of benefits. And One of the things that has been really cool is a lot of scientists and researchers are digging deeper into understanding the 
therapeutic actions or components of the plants themselves so that we can better understand how the essential oils work themselves. There are a ton of articles, more so in the last, I would say like three to five years that are starting to prove the use or the best case use of different essential oils for their antibacterial properties or their analgesic properties or even soothing properties. So it's really, really cool and interesting that we from a holistic perspective and a scientific perspective are starting to really and truly come together. So with that being said, the first essential oil that I want to share with you all today is going to be cypress essential oil. And that comes from the Cooper ACE family. And I will also tell you, okay, don't judge me because <laughs> Botanical names come from Latin, all right? I did not take Latin in high school. I took Spanish. And if you are that person that either knows Latin, studied it, loves the language, please send me an email at hello at joyfulebony.com because I want to talk to you. And my instructor, when I was going over essential oils, laughed at me quite a bit because she too was in the situation where you have these Latin names and you're trying to make sure that you're pronouncing them correctly. And I don't want to mispronounce things, but sometimes it's hard, even with Google Translator and all the things, I spent quite a bit of time trying to make sure I understood how to pronounce all of these Latin names. And the point of my rant is that if you are someone that has studied Latin or you love language and the way of producing all of the botanical names associated with plants, hit me up. I want to talk to you because you know that people will correct you for everything. And if I can avoid it and learn, I definitely want to. So with that, give me grace when it comes to <laughs> pronouncing these botanical names for essential oils. So now that we've gotten that out the way, let's talk about cypress. So it comes from an evergreen tree and the trees themselves are gorgeous. They can grow up to a hundred feet high and they also of course have male and female flowers. And when you're looking at essential oils, you're going to see different ways of processing them, whether it is steam distilled or expeller pressed. And you also will be able to understand why that particular method was used based upon the part of the plant that we derive that essential oil from. More on that in a later episode. But for how we come to know the cypress oils, and, and they have been around for centuries. Many different people have used them for different therapeutic benefits. But a lot of times we get cypress oil from regions such as France, Morocco, and even Spain. So when you actually get cypress oil, one thing you want to make sure that you're checking for is that you're not getting blue cypress because that is different. So when you get your bottle of cypress essential oil, and you smell it, it should give you like a pine-like smell. And you also want to look for a clear liquid or even a pale yellow color when you blot it on a sheet of paper, for example. And with any essential oil, what you're also trying to check for is that when you place a drop on a sheet of paper, it could be a white piece of paper, you want to make sure it dries relatively quickly. And when I say quickly, I mean less than 30 minutes. But when you look at that blot, wherever you put your essential oil, you want to make sure that if you rub your finger across it, that it doesn't feel like it's oily. Even when you place a piece, or not a piece, but a drop in your fingers or your hand and you rub it together, it shouldn't feel oily. And if that is the case, you know that it's been adulterated with some type of carrier oil. So that is something to keep in mind. And when we look at the therapeutic properties of cypress oils, it can be an astringent, especially... <laughs> If you're someone like me that gets really sweaty, that comes in handy. And you will also want to make sure that you are paying attention to the therapeutic 
properties of the essential oils because cypress is also a vasoconstrictor. So if you are taking any kind of medications, you want to make sure that you're paying attention to that because if you have blood pressure issues or you're taking a blood pressure medication, it may have a potentially negative impact on that. So be very careful when you're using the essential oil, but I bring up Cypress as a vasoconstrictor for that reason. So when we're thinking about that, if you ever want to blend Cypress with a different essential oil, you can blend it with things like lemon or clary sage or sweet marjoram. And speaking of that sweet marjoram, that is actually what I'm going to talk about next, but in a story version. And um, forgive me in advance because these are the things that I love to share with you as a please don't do what Ebony did because it may or may not have a good ending. But I'm sharing these things with you because I want you to do better. Now, I always tend to start my very interesting stories with see what had happened was um, because in this case, that really is it. Yeah. So I know that sometimes because of IBS, every now and again, I'll get a flare up, but I have been super, super good. However, I made the really bad mistake of having my morning breakfast and I had oatmeal and I decided to go, hmm, what if I chopped up some prunes and I added chia seeds, flax seeds, and hemp seeds with my oatmeal? Um, I know you already know where this is going. And partially why I decided to do that was because I had been struggling with constipation, which I had not had trouble with in a long time. So naturally, I almost uh, had some very bad things happen to me, which included me not making it home because it worked so quickly. But I ended up with really bad gas afterwards. So I know that I can blend lavender, ginger, and sweet marjoram together and they would really and truly just one help to calm me down because having that amount of flatulence when I have not had that in years was stressing me out I'm not gonna lie like I'm human I have gas we have talked about poop on this podcast and you guys understand okay you understand me so I am being as real as it gets so I showered and I went to do my calculations so that I could make sure that I wasn't adding too much of any one thing. And I put my essential oil in my carrier oil. I use sweet almond oil and everything was good. But Ebony thought that it was a good idea to add petroleum jelly to the mix. Now, Normally, I do layer my oils and then I add petroleum jelly, especially in the wintertime, because my skin just gets really dry. So in my mind, I'm like, oh, we're just going to seal this in and make it work white. Wrong. Uh, so ginger especially can be a very warming oil. Uh, and that it was. No, So not only... Did I use those oils and then I added a nice sealing protective layer of petroleum jelly, but then I decided to wear a onesie to bed, okay? Now, it was incredibly soothing. The blend was wonderful. When used as directed and, and as intended, it works wonders. I wasn't uh, anxious. I, my gas went away. Everything was fine. But around two o'clock in the morning, I woke up on fire. Okay. I, I was hot. So I thought that I slept with the heat on. I did not. It was literally the warming effect of the essential oils plus the onesie, of course. And I took off the onesie 
and I literally placed my hand on my abdomen and it was so warm. And I thought, wow, this is incredible just to see that practical application of the essential oils. But I was also miserable because I was really hot. And then I had a hot flash and um, yeah. So this is why I tell you that it is so important to be very, very conscious of how you use your essential oils. That's the first thing. And then the second thing is when it comes to working with them, you always want to make sure that you're actually working with someone that knows what they're doing and that you don't go to the far end of the spectrum from the perspective of experimenting. If you are working with an aromatherapist, say we are working together, I will give you all of the instructions. I will tell you why a particular oil was used. I will tell you how to use them. I will tell you when the expiration date is of said oils, or especially when you're working with carrier oils. And I will also tell you what not to do. And in that case, Here's a free tip for you. Do not use petroleum jelly to seal in warming essential oils. It is a bad idea. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so let's actually talk about sweet marjoram. And previously I talked about monoterpenes and this particular episode is going to focus on monoterpene rich essential oils and it is also supported by sesquiterpenes and esters so that again is really and truly just the chemical structure of the essential oil itself that is extracted from the plant matter and the core therapeutic properties of this particular essential oil that comes from the lamaceae family which is also a part of the lavender family it is going to be analgesic. It is an, uh, a very powerful antibacterial, antiseptic, antispasmodic, hence why I used it for my gas blend. And it is also a sedative. Now, some clients that I have worked with, this really and truly was sedative for them. And you could tell by just monitoring them how the essential oil impacted them and it's really cool from that perspective to be able to see that but from a plant perspective it's it's kind of like a, a a low growing bush and it has grayish like green leaves it's a very beautiful plant actually because the flowers are purple and white and Typically, sweet marjoram is steam distilled. So most of the time when you are harvesting sweet marjoram, you are going to pretty much harvest them when they're still fresh. So for the most part, a lot of places, and I don't mean a lot in terms of, wow, it's produced everywhere, but the primary places of production where we get this particular essential oil is going to be Egypt, Spain, Morocco, Tunisia, uh, Bulgaria, Hungary, Germany, and even Portugal. So when you're looking to purchase this particular essential oil, again, the essential oil is going to be clear and it may have a kind of pale green hue to it so you want to look out for that and you also want to pay attention to the smell of it it is going to smell kind of spicy and herbaceous and it's really it, it's a really beautiful smell some people are like oh my gosh this is the best thing ever while other people are like nah nah and that is typical for most essential oils because everyone is different. It depends on your experience or any type of memories. We all have that one person, for me, it was an aunt that wore way too much perfume and it was really floral. And for a very long time, I hated floral perfumes until I started paying more attention to more natural fragrances rather than the more synthetic ones so all of that is going to kind of come into play as it relates to essential oils as well and you'll be very surprised that when you 
start the process of paying more attention to essential oils and really training your nose, you're going to be able to notice the difference between one type of essential oil versus another. And it's really cool to be able to do that. I absolutely love doing that. And I highly encourage you to buy a an essential oil from two different brands. Let's say get a regular smegular lavender and then purchase one from maybe Pranarome, for example. They're an organic essential oil company and they do a very good job of harvesting their essential oils and just smell the difference and pay attention to how it feels in your hands pay attention to how it dries all of those things are very important when it comes to picking and choosing your essential oils and obviously smell them to see the difference All of that is really cool, but I also want to remind you when it comes to sweet marjoram, it does blend really well with a lot of things. You can blend it with frankincense, geranium, which you will hear about in our next episode, clary sage. I'm just giving you guys the preview of podcast episodes coming, but You can also pair it with citrus oils, and many of us are familiar with lemon and lime, for example, but I want to talk about mandarin essential oil, which also blends well with sweet marjoram, and mandarin or citrus reticulata comes from the rutaceae family, which is also common to many of our citrus oils, but it is a small evergreen tree, and we know that it produces mandarin oranges. There's no surprise there. But in this particular type of essential oil, it's actually code expressed. And in that case, when we are code expressing a particular essential oil, you're basically puncturing holes within the kind of skin itself of the whole fruit. And of course, what's going to happen along with this is you're going to take some of the juice along with it. But in that case, during the distilling process, you're going to take out the juice, so to speak, and you'll be left with the essential oil. And a lot of times there are many different ways to distill or obtain or extract essential oils, but I'm just going to give you that highlight of code expression for right now. The other process is steam distill, which you've probably heard me mention a couple times with the other two oils. Now, typically where we get these essential oils from are going to be Italy, Spain, Argentina, Egypt, again, Brazil, and even some parts of the US. And with this particular essential oil, you're definitely going to want to look for like a yellow green color Sometimes you'll also get a gold or orange color of the essential oil. Either way, mandarin essential oil smells beautiful. It is definitely that citrus aroma that we are used to, but it also has a slight floral note to it. And it, it depending on how, like at what stage you get the essential oil from, whether it's green, yellow, or red in terms of the ripening stage, it can have a different fragrance profile, which again, it depends on where you're getting it from, what your supplier or who your supplier is, and and different temperatures, especially, and, and just how you choose to harvest it. So when it comes to mandarin essential oil, the therapeutic properties are going to be, again, antiseptic, antispasmodic. It's a digestive, a sedative, and it really and truly just helps to calm you down. I tend to use marjoram when I'm slightly nauseous because it calms my stomach down and it also gives me kind of something else to focus on rather than the fact that my stomach is upset especially if I don't want to use a peppermint or a ginger mandarin tends to come in handy or honestly any other citrus oil as well so I wanted to point that out and I wanted to 
give you a, an overview of some essential oils that you may not commonly hear about. And also, even when you're thinking about blending essential oils with mandarin, you can look at sandalwood, spearmint, thyme, linalol, because there are different chemotypes of or different families or branches of essential oils and the linalol smells really good with mandarin or you can again mix it with ginger or grapefruit or any other citrus essential oil and typically mandarin is generally regarded as safe and the biggest takeaway that I wanted to be able to provide you all with today is the ability to look at different types of essential oils to suit your overall well-being. Now, I went into great detail on this particular episode, but I want to give you as much information that's easily digestible at the same time. So I highly encourage you to take a look at these different essential oils. Today, we talked about cypress, sweet marjoram, and mandarin. So take a look, go online, do your research, and definitely let me know if you try them. You can tag me at Joyful Ebony on any social media platform, and I would absolutely love to talk to you about what your experience was. And you can always email me at hello at joyfulebony.com, and I would absolutely love to hear how you're enjoying this series. So with that, take care. Okay, Thyroid Warriors, get out there and take things one step at a time. Remember, reflect on your triumphs, know that you are doing your best, and do what you need to do in order to be well. I would absolutely love it if you subscribe to this podcast and share this episode with a friend. And don't forget, leave me a review. I read those and try very hard to improve the show based upon your feedback. So I'd love to hear from you. And with that, be happy, be whole, and be well. Take care.